there are 31 U.S. military uh, facilities in Okinawa Prefecture. Really tiny islands, but we have 31. And comparing that area of dedicated U.S. military facility, Okinawa Prefecture share the burden is 389 times more than the of mainland Japan. The Ryukyu Kingdom was an independent nation, but um, it's annexed by uh, Japan in 1879. Japan sent its police and army to annex it by force under the name of Ryukyu Disposition. The people of Ryukyu were then banned from using our own native languages and were subjected to assimilation policies that changed our custom of those of Japan. In 1945, during World War II, Okinawa became a battlefield between Japan and the U.S. and more than one in four Okinawans lost their lives. And after the war, Okinawa was under U.S. military occupation for 27 years. In the 1950s, the emperor, Japanese emperor who had supposedly lost his political power, uh, sent a message to the United States saying, like, he wants a long-term U.S. military occupation of the Ryukyu Islands, whether 25, 50, or longer. And now it's it's still, you know, the military occupation is there in Okinawa. It's over 78 years, but it's still there. Um, in 1972, <coughs> under the secret agreement between the U.S. and Japan, the Ryukyu Islands were returned to Japan once again. And then now it's remained so to this day. Last year was 50th anniversary of so-called reversion. Um, to return to the topic, due to the uh, presence of these spaces, we are the indigenous people of the Ryukyu Okinawa have been suffering various damage of the daily, on the on a daily basis for generations. Uh, in terms of like a land glove, for example, the land of my grandfather. Uh, inherited from his ancestor was seized and used for military purpose without agreement while they were in the POW camp. This is a uh, you know, violation of the uh, Hague conven Convention. My grandfather it was a war survivor, so he fought for, to get his land back in protest against the use of his land for warfare. However, three years ago, he was finally unable to return to his land um, and passed away. Okinawa is such a small island, so the U.S. military bases are, you know, in the middle of the city, in the urban area. Many of them are on private land, not state-owned land. For example, 34% of Okinawa city, where I was born, and 82% of Kadena, town are occupied by U.S. military bases. So we're in the, you know, really uh, tiny spot, and then U.S. military got really nice spot, and huge uh, spot in the island. U.S. military aircraft taken off from and landed on the, at, at the Tema and the Kamena Air Base, and it, it was measured more than 40,000 times a year, so which means that, the, you know, it made uh, several hundred uh, a day by simple calculation. So it's unlike to the, the you know uh, passenger planes. The noise damage caused the military planes, with planes which is trained by like taking off suddenly, flying really low altitudes, and then conducting touch and go drills. It's really serious. It's a daily uh, occurrence, and you know usually like a classroom. Uh, of the children's school are repeatedly interrupted by fighter jet flying over the school building during the class time. According to uh, the statistic taken by the Japanese government since the return to Japan in 1972, U.S. plane uh, has crashed at least 49 times, uh, which you know means like once a year on the land, on the ocean. Um, on one occasion, a uh, plane crashed into the elementary school, and I remember it's um, eight years ago, one crashed down into the university campus. You know, um, it's, you know, of course, killing and injured several people and houses and so on. 
and nearly 1,000 accidents related to the U U.S. military aircraft has occurred, including like dropping parts. One time, like a spread, like a door of the helicopter um, dropped into the elementary school uh, ground, which was during the class class time. So the children were playing and around, um, you know, the ground, but it's dropped in that way, or sometimes it's dropped in the like a nursery school. Mm -hmm. So it's really like, you know, serious and dropped parts. Emergency landing, mid-air contact, and fell down drops uh, was also occurred. In 1995, a rape of elementary school students by three US soldiers drew international attention to the damage caused by the base on, in Okinawa. So now it's 28 years later, now, but nothing has changed, and similar incidents continue to occur. According to the uh, U.S. Department of the Navy, in 2012, the U.S. Uh, the U.S. military bases in Okinawa has the highest incident of sex crime in the world. Furthermore, the U.S. military is protected by extraterritorial uh, privilege and crimes committed while on the official duty are not subject to Japanese jurisdiction and nor, the, nor are the reported to the Okinawan government side. Even for crimes um, that are harmless, the US-Japan status or forces agreement prevents them from being taken into co uh, custody. These cases are always happening in Okinawa, so if you compare with other prefectures in Japan, it's, there are 33 uh, prefectures with that they don't host any U.S. military bases, so it's never happened in their, their land, but it's always concentrated in Okinawa. Another problem is PFAS, uh, contamination of drinking water, PFAS, P-F-A-S, that uh, has also become a big issue. Acro approximately 450,000 people in seven cities, town, and villages in Okinawa use the water as their tap water. Our waters are also contaminated. The problem of environmental pollution is not limited to PFAS, but also faced with illegal dump, dumped uh, dioxin, Asian orange, PCBs, and so on. You know, the presence of like bullets, you know, if you go to the mountain and dig the soil and you can easily find the, like the bullets from the US military and so on, it's really dangerous and then it's also affect to the environment. Um, accidents caused by like a straight bullets, wildfire, is you know, daily basis happening. In particular, uh, you know, women, children, are the disabled and the elderly are especially affected by those issues. Due to the status of forces agreement, 90% of the cases involving U.S. military personnel go um, unprosecuted and, you know, 90% is not even bring it to the court. And responsibility for accidents involving military aircraft and then base delivered environmental pollution is unquestioned. We can never touch it. As the Japanese government refused to listen to the voice of Okinawan uh, lo local government, saying that the local government has no authority in, in measure of security, di uh, security, diplomacy, and military affairs, because these are the matter of the responsibility of the national government. So, you know, our voice is never hard. After the case um, in 1995, you know, the um, U.S. and Japan had a, a agreement and announcement that said they will close the Fudema base in the middle of the city. So we were so happy to hear that. But next year they say, okay, so instead of closing the base, we're going to make a new, brand new base on uh, Henoko Bay, which is really precious ocean. You can, you know, you should come and swim in the ocean. It's really beautiful that you know, dugongs and living in their area, and then coral reef, and then fish, and then it's really precious ocean, but then they decide to, um, you know, landfill and then make another base on Henoko. 
so we did the referendum. We wanted to show our democracy, our um, indigenous voice should be heard. So we did the referendum and 70, more than 70 percent people vote for no for the landfill to make another base. But um, Japan said, okay, maybe you have democracy in Okinawa, but we have our democracy in Japan. And the next, very next day, they restart the construction and then it's still going on. So, it, you know, they say like making another base is to reduce your burden of Okinawa. And then we're told the same thing. And then, okay, we can reduce your burden and then send the military to Guam. But, and then it's, it's nearly open in Guam, but it's, you know, our situation is never changed. It's just, to, you know, spread out and expand the military burden to other indigenous community. And then we're, we really have to think about it in that way. And also, uh, Japanese government told us that, okay, uh, we can reduce your burden and then bring uh, some training from Okinawa to Darwin. And then, you know, <laughs> So you're going to be happy, but no, we never be happy and then, it, you know, situation never change and then it makes more uh, people, you know, in Australia are in trouble. It's not just the U.S. military, but also Japanese self-defense force bases are really dangerous and then now it's uh, being built one after another in Ryukyu Islands from the north. Uh, Amami and Miyako, Ishigake, and Yonaguni, the island chain is, you know, it's already made and then they say like it, this is a pretext of the China threat. Okinawa was once a battleground and we lost one host population and we cannot accept that, you know, our island uh, came into the military base and then again it's returned, you know, turned into the battlefield. We cannot accept that. Militarization is just destroying the indigenous people's way of life, um, natural environment, and ourselves. Um, we always told that this is for the security, but for us, it's not. Security is never be here in Okinawa, and then I. Uh, this is really good chance for me to think about other folks in, you know, around the world, like Guam, Philippines. Uh, Australia. So it's not just our issue. We have, if we get together to think about in different perspective for the genuine security, I think it's really.